Hey everyone, so in today's video, um, I want to take a little look at a few posts I found on a Christian subreddit, where Christian people are asking other Christians for advice, which, you know, fair enough, okay, whatever, I have no issues with that, that's not the point of this video. Um, what I thought would be interesting was if we take a look at a couple of these posts, because I think some of the questions highlight um, some really, really interesting points about not only Christianity, but just religion in general, and the way it can make people feel, both the good and the bad things. Um, what I will say is that a lot of the advice that was given on the subreddit, I do actually think um, it was from a really good place, people were being really kind, really nice, really sensible about things. So these weren't the kind of crazy extremist Christians we normally look at in my videos, but I do think the questions that were asked in the first pla place do highlight a few issues and raise some points worth talking about. I want to try and make a series of short videos on this, so I think I'm only going to cover like one or two questions per video and kind of make it into a bit of a series. Um, I'm going to be in Texas at the end of the month for Faithless Forum. I'm going to be away for a while, so I want to try and get a few videos out and schedule them in advance for you guys, so I'm not just like leaving you in the lurch for a week. So maybe this could be a good series to do that with. The other thing I want to do with this video and these videos is to try and give an atheist perspective or advice kind of like in response to some of these questions. So obviously my advice isn't going to be about, you know, how to worship God or how to get into heaven because I don't think those things exist. So obviously that's not the kind of advice I'm going to be giving. But I do think I can hopefully maybe like, I don't, I don't know, help some people out from just a purely human perspective and from a perspective of making the most out of this one life that we have. And um, I don't know, I, I should mention, you know, I'm not any kind of uh, therapist or expert or, you know, pro agony ant. I'm just a person who's lived life and learnt some stuff along the way, and so I thought maybe it'd make an interesting video. I don't know, don't, no, shut up. I'm just, yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So the first question I wanted to talk about was a really interesting one, because not so much for the main question itself, but the description, I really identified with it, and I saw a lot of myself in this person. They write, why did God make us all different if it causes so many problems? God made me more sensitive than the average person. I've always hated it. I cry easily, my feelings get hurt easily. I cannot be tough. I'm naive, I'm idealistic. On a bad day, I wonder if my life has any value or if I contribute anything to the world. I feel like I'm sucking up space. So the God stuff aside about why did God make us all different, I don't think that's the main point of this question. I honestly think this is a person who is really hurting and really insecure and reaching out for help. They want someone to tell them that it's okay to be you. And it is. It's more than okay to be sensitive and emotional. That's exactly the kind of person I am. And it has taken a lot of work to get to a point where I both accept that and kind of embrace it and make the most of it. For a long time, I was like this person and I hated how sensitive I was. I hated how easily I cried. I hated how emotional I get. Because I'm one of those people who cry everything. I don't care if I'm sad or angry or happy, I cry. It's just my go-to response. I get so overwhelmed with emotions, I just have to cry. As a teenager in particular, I was constantly being told, you're too emotional, you're too sensitive, you're me, 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 you know, you're not, you're not gonna cope in the real world like this. And yeah, a lot of people made fun of me and mocked me for how sensitive I was. And in school, kids were mean and they would literally like try and push me and push me to the point where they'd try and make me cry on purpose because they wanted to see that reaction out of me because they knew they could get that reaction. And it was horrible. And I put up with some real crap because of it. Not just like name calling and mean comments and people like literally poking me and poking me and pushing me and pushing me and figuring out my triggers. Um, People, you know, throwing your food on the floor at lunch. Yeah, okay, I, I don't <laughs> I don't want to go into it. Even now, it makes me emotional. Um, the point is, I know what it's like, and I completely relate to this person who, like, you know, they, they see things like being naive and idealistic as a bad thing. They've been told that these are bad things. And it's just, it's kind of heartbreaking to see, because this person was me, just I didn't have the God aspect of it. So, the advice I'd give to this person is, regardless of whether you believe in a god or not, regardless of whether you think a god made you a certain way or not, the how you got here isn't important. What is important is that you are here now and this is the kind of person you are and you need to learn to love yourself. It can often seem like the people who are kind of cold and 
a little bit more straightforward and rational are the people who have things easiest in life. And to some extent, yes, yeah, some things are easier for them. For example, they might be a little bit better at being kind of like cold, calculated leaders. They might be better at talking over people and so they sound more authoritative. Um, they might be better at just like shutting things out and getting on with things when they're stressed. So yeah, they, some of them do have advantages like that. But there's an advantage to being a sensitive emotional person as well. We feel more empathy for others, we can relate to others more. A lot of people who are sensitive and empathetic like this um, are better at jobs like, you know, nursing and caring for people. They're better at being teachers or working in childcare. Understanding other people's emotions and being so in tune with emotions can be great for jobs like marketing where you're essentially manipulating others' emotions. Well, not necessarily manipulating, but making use of and, you know, working to trigger certain emotions in people. My point is, there's room enough in the world for both cold people and emotional people and everyone in between. You just have to figure out what your skills are within being an emotional person and how you can utilize that in the future. There's always, always gonna be room for sensitive emotional people and there's always going to be some amazing good you can do in the world for others. Your emotions and your sensitivity aren't a weakness, they're just a part of who you are, and you need to learn to embrace them and accept that and make the most of them. For a long time I tried to like suppress my emotions and pretend I was just like, you know, I'm gonna be all like rational and cool and like, no, that's not who I am. The moment I was like, no, screw this, I am emotional, I do care about people, I do let things affect me. And the moment I started, just on my YouTube channel for example, the moment I started showing that side of me a lot more and just being true to who I was, I think my content got better because I started focusing on the topics that I really cared about, which were about real people and real lives um, and relating to other people. You know, it does upset me on a deep level when I see other people hurting. While I was reviewing the books like, you know, Michael and Debbie Pearls to train up a child and I was reading some of the stuff in that, I did get teary-eyed and emotional. But I think that level of caring made my videos all the better because I was so invested in what I was saying and I, I genuinely don't want their message to be spread because I don't want any kids to suffer. So while some people might see the sensitivity as a weakness, I see it as a strength. I see it as a part of me. And I think it does make me a better person sometimes. And it can make you a better person as well. I think if you are this kind of person, you are worried about, you know, your, your emotional and sensitivity being a weakness. There are things you can do to kind of improve on it and become a better person. For example, if you feel you're being too idealistic, maybe you can work on being a little bit more realistic. So instead of just assuming the best of everything and thinking everything's gonna be perfect, you could maybe work on, instead of just like having these big dreams and goals, you could work on making them a little bit more realistic. So write down your goals, have a step-by-step -step plan of how you're actually gonna achieve them in the real world, and think about the problems that can come up, and think about how you're gonna combat them. So it's being a little bit more practical while still embracing your kind of idealistic, uh, big dreamer type views, if that makes sense. If you're worried about being naive, Talk to the other people around you and ask them what they think. Share some of your views and listen to other people's views and try and learn and expand your opinions and your knowledge and everything. If you're worried about being too sensitive towards things in terms of, you know, it makes you anxious or it makes you overly emotional like I used to be. Um, I used to get terrible panic attacks a lot. I was an absolute wreck for a time. So I saw a counsellor and I went through cognitive behavioural therapy and I learned some mindfulness techniques, and now when I feel myself getting overwhelmed and emotional, and it's not an opportune moment to be emotional and overwhelmed, if I feel a panic attack coming on, and you know, I know I can't deal with it and stuff, I have breathing exercises that I have to try and calm me down and get me back into a nice, calm, um, stable mood. I have certain little things I do to kind of, again, stabilize me and bring me down from that um, heightened emotional state, like twanging a hair tie on my wrist, things like that can really help calm me down. There are definitely techniques that, n not all of them are going to work for you, but there are techniques that you can learn and employ so that, you know, it's great to be emotional sometimes, but it's not always the best moment. So if you can learn to pick and choose when you kind of access those emotions or when you let them overwhelm you and when you don't let them overwhelm you, you'll be a lot more in control and just feel a lot better about things. Does this make sense? <laughs> I hope I'm not just rambling here, I haven't like scripted or planned this video other than picking out a few questions, so I'm just kind of talking here. <laughs> Another question I want to touch on in this video is a little bit more, I guess, religion based. And this person says they feel a pressure to be perfect. They write, I want to grow close to the Lord but I'm scared of having all my imperfections ex exposed. I'm scared I'll fail God. 
I'm afraid of therapy because I'll have to confront my demons. I know no one is perfect. I have a Bible I'm too scared to read. Tons of pamphlets on Novanus? No, no, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I usually use YouTube videos to pray. I don't know what to say. How can I focus less attention on myself and live for God? I found this one really interesting because you might have noticed one of the big themes I come back to in a lot of my videos is how I don't really like the teaching, I guess, that says you should put worshipping God above looking after yourself or you should live for God instead of living for yourself. I don't like the teaching that says stop listening to yourself and your opinions and your emotions and only put your trust and faith in the Bible and what that says. Um, I really don't like that teaching. I think it's incredibly damaging. I think it strips people of their independence. I think it's a really backwards way of thinking and I think it's really harmful. Another theme I talk about a lot is how religions often employ fear tactics to try and make sure people stay within the faith, they don't want to leave, they don't want to question anything because they're scared. It, it is a control tactic and I think this is a perfect example of someone who has been made to be so fearful of just who they are and being an individual and thinking for themselves and I think it's a real shame to see someone like this. It absolutely like kills me and breaks my heart to see someone who is literally living their life in fear and in this case it's because of religion which I just find again heartbreaking. I guess to answer this or give advice as an atheist is a little bit difficult because for the last question, how can I focus less attention on myself and live for God? Obviously I say don't. Focus on yourself. Make yourself better. God doesn't exist. That doesn't matter. That's what I want to say, but that's not going to help this person or anyone else. What I would say is if you do believe in a God and you do want to spend a portion of your life worshipping a God and believing in a God and praying and all that kind of stuff, and that's how you want to spend your life, then you should be able to. But you need to look after yourself and be happy with yourself before you can do any of that for anyone else, whether it's a God or a family member or a friend or anything. You need to put yourself first. You need to be happy with yourself, comfortable with yourself. You have to be mentally healthy and stable before you can do anything for anyone else. And that includes worshipping a god. When it comes to things like worrying that you're not perfect enough or you have too many flaws or you sin too much, again, this makes me so mad at religion for making people feel this way. But that's not what this is about. What I will say is that everyone has flaws. Everyone has imperfections. And what matters is not what your flaws are, but how you're working to fix them and improve them and make them better and how you feel you can be a better person. And my advice to this person and anyone in a similar situation would be forget about being perfect for God. Figure out how to make yourself happy for you and what will make you comfortable and confident and happy within yourself. And then you can think about worshipping God and all that sort of stuff as well. But you need to be okay with yourself first before you can do any of that stuff for other people. I'd make a list. Th this is just me. This is, um, because again, I haven't always liked myself. Again, I kind of picked this question because I can relate. So I'm not giving this advice as like a therapist or anyone who's actually qualified. I'm just trying to give this advice as someone who's been through something similar and this is what helped me. But yeah, I, I spent a lot of time hating a lot of stuff about myself. Everything from my appearance to my personality to my reactions to things, ev everything. And it took a long, long time and a lot of hard work to get to a place where I actually like myself um, and accept myself for who I am. And obviously I'm still growing and changing and trying to be better all the time, but I feel I've come a long way from where I used to be and that's what I try and focus on and that's what's important. And that's what I want this person to be able to do as well. What helped me, this might not be the best thing for you, but um, maybe it's worth trying. What helped me was I made a list of everything I didn't like about myself. And it wasn't like a self-pitying list. It wasn't like a, um, like, oh, boo-hoo, poor me, I don't like my hair kind of thing. Um, it was honestly trying to be a practical list of things I could change. And so I made this list and some of them were physical things. For example, I didn't like my hair. I didn't like my eyebrows. I thought I had a big nose. I don't like my wonky teeth, things like that. Um, and then some of them were more personality-based. For example, like, you know, I didn't like how insecure and terrified I was around girls. I was constantly scared of them and so I did put up these big defensive walls. There were lots and lots of different things like that. And then once I had my list, I started to address each one and look at them and I was like, well, which ones of these can I change and which ones can't? For example, I don't like my nose, but I can't change that. So I had to just learn to be like, well, either I save up a lot of money and get a nose job and go through a hell of a lot of painful surgery, and maybe I still won't like it at the end, or I just learn to accept it and be like, this is my nose. If people don't like it, screw them, but it's my nose. And so that's what I did with that one. And I was just like, well, 
you know, now I, I don't really care less about my nose. It's just a thing on my face. Other things, I was like, okay, well, I don't like my hair. Let's dye it. I don't like my eyebrows. Let's pluck them and get some makeup products to fill them in and actually make them look like there's something on my face. <laughs> you know, things like that. Um, and then when it came to personality and those kinds of traits, it was obviously a lot more complex and a lot more difficult. But I started to think about why I felt that way, why I acted certain ways towards certain people or in certain situations. I started to look at the triggers for certain behaviours and then I started to look at how I could actively change that and change my behaviours and change my attitudes. And then you put all that into practice and soon over time you find yourself, I don't know, just, just changing and growing and becoming a better person and that made me happier and then that made me nicer to people and then that made me happier and then that made me a better person and that made me happier and it's all a nice upward cycle of things getting better and things getting happier and me learning to accept and love myself the way I am and like I say it's not just you do some stuff and then you're better and then it's over self-improvement is like this continuous cycle and it never ends but that's not a bad thing because that just means there's no peak you can reach. You can always be better, you can always be growing. And I think that's an amazing, exciting part of life. The other thing to remember is that you're not doing this alone. Reach out to family and friends, reach out to a counselor, reach out to a teacher, reach out to someone you work with maybe, and, and talk to them about how you're feeling and the things you want to improve on. And having someone there to help you along the way really, really helps. The other thing is that they might see things that you think are a flaw and think no that's actually a strength and show you how it's a good thing and why you maybe don't need to change things about you. Am I rambling here? I might be, I don't know, but um yeah I'm gonna end this here because you know I know a lot of you don't like the really really long videos and I want to kind of keep this short and sweet. Yeah let me know your thoughts on sort of these questions and the advice I gave and what advice you would give to people regardless of whether they're Christian or atheist or any other religion. Let me know what you thought of the kind of questions being asked as well and the sort of commentary that gives on religion because uh, I'm really really interested to hear your thoughts. But thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I make more videos about atheism stuff and sciencey stuff and social commentary stuff and just lots of fun stuff and giggles. I've also got a giveaway going on at the minute, so I will link that in the description below and you can go check it out and enter and um, win some fun stuff to celebrate my 100,000 subscribers. So that's there. Uh, I'm rambling now, but thank you for joining me today and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much to everyone supporting me on Patreon this month, including Gambit and a Chauffeur, Day Sean, Liv's Pantyhose Addiction, Data Jack, Christian Berg, Rachel B. Royer, Jaden Shepard, Robert Corte, Peter Carrack, Sir Michael Moore, Christina the Atheist, Christian Opitz, Sage Floriel, Greg Glad, and Lauren Hart. You're all amazing.